I like it like that. Ah, cool. All right, we are live on YouTube. Uh, welcome, uh, welcome everybody to this uh, special Friday Live Agile on the YouTube channel of Agile Lounge for Business Agility. And uh, very soon we're gonna start also the recording of the... the oh, YouTube, sh 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 sorry about this, you see, that's the magic of the live. Shut up, Fredo, thank you very much. And we are also doing an experimentation, I call it the MVC for most viable communication with the clubhouse. Amazing Friday with two gentlemen, two great guys that I met for the real crew. That we're going to reel your contract, your rate, and full transparency. We'll talk about it maybe a bit later uh, if we discover that DevOps is a person or not. So let me now go. Yes, Sam, I know, I know. So let's, let's kick it. So their Real Agile is recording as well for my three, 3,500 now subscriber on multi-platform most of them are on spotify and apple podcast and we are contemplating to be also on amazon prime podcast i don't know if you know that guys but they are uh, late launching into this um upcoming show upcoming show that they real agile scrum fuck up yes we're gonna talk and dare to talk about the scrum fuck up because on both medium and linkedin we see a lot of people especially from europe saying that Scrum is dead again, again, like a lot of lashing against Scrum. And I don't think they understand Subsention. And by the way, guys, in the comment below, uh, tell me what is Subsention? Because if you don't know Subsention, you don't know fuck about Scrum. So that's the thing. Yes, we could use the F word and the S word in this show. And it's going to be for Apple. Only Apple asked me when I push it to put a little E for explicit content. Could you imagine that? because the F and the S word are dangerous for the uh, safe spacer. So without further ado, let's go into this real DevOps with two yes. real uh, person. <laughs> and so, yeah, but so, you know, you're more than person. So gentlemen, tell me, is DevOps a person? All right, so do you want to start, Alex, or sh should I start? I, I actually, thank you for... for uh, <laughs> organizing this. It's really cool to be here and talk about that. I think it's, it's a subject that is really close to us because we're recruiting on a daily basis for a lot of companies and they talk to us about DevOps a lot of times, right, Alex? Yeah, they'll talk about DevOps, they'll talk about DevOps methodologies, but they'll most likely just talk about, oh, I need a DevOps. <laughs> I need a DevOps. So which means they imply that it could be you, it could be me, we are a DevOps. Is that it? Is that the kind of thing that... It's funny because uh, it's, it's like something that's not new at all. I mean, DevOps is, is a philosophy that has been installed or, or, or propagated since 2007, uh, started in Belgium, and, and it came to, to, it got disseminated in all different countries and stuff, and it's becoming something popular here that we're talking about it, and every day we're asked to recruit for it. But unfortunately, still today, uh, a lot of people don't understand what is DevOps. And I think that's that's what we're going to talk about. What is DevOps? Is that, like you said, is it a person? Is it uh, a philosophy? What is a DevOps? And, you know, um, a DevOps, for me, uh, as, as the way I understand it, the way it was explained or the way it was propagated is DevOps is, is, is two departments, development and operations working together. All right. You know? I didn't know that. It's amazing because you have devs and jobs. Okay, so man, it's enlightening. So go on. It's interesting. Yeah, Captain Obvious stating the day today. Yes, and 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 you know, you know, it's it's well, that's just just the start of it. And I think it started, and not I think it started. It started by the fact that every department was segmented, and actually, DevOps is a bit more complex than just development and operation because there's a lot of different department in development and uh, IT uh, operations. But at the, at, at the start of it, every department was segmented and we're not talking to each other. And what did it cause? You know, shit shows. Since we can say this, the word S, we can say a shit show. There, but, there, my friend, you're on yeah. there real as I so you can get and, and also a, an, an augmentation of all your, 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 uh, your uh, planning cost because it doesn't work the right way. Planning cost is, is, is higher. And also the delivery is not as planned. So 
this is why the DevOps was invented to reduce the cost and also to have a better planning and most of all, a better delivery. Yeah. Alex? Well, I, I definitely out? heard uh, the point of uh, a view of the, like the technical side of DevOps being uh, a way to save time, a way to develop that is more in line with uh, the new, like the, the, the environment today. Because today there's a lot of web applications. There's a lot of applications. There's a lot of applications in your applications. And all of this has to be operational. So you have to put it into a uh, live server and you have to develop it. And that also has to be in a not live server. So there's so many applications that before maybe you had one big application you worked on, you can work it on an agile method and you can put it live you know, in one big step. But now you've got so many applications being developed in the same time and you want it to be operational quickly and you want it to do it, uh, you know, in a, in a way that's pertinent today. That's where I find that DevOps is, is going, but through, you know, just being much more pertinent with uh, everyone going on web. I don't know if DevOps really was so pertinent before the web being so big. Uh, well, if you like uh, a little bit of history uh, with my 20 some experience in uh, Lean Scrum and then Agile, because uh, I, I heard from the, some of the uh, master, which is both engineer and consultant, that <clears throat> even Jeff Chatterland says that uh, at the 20th anniversary of the manifesto, he says like uh, Scrum and extreme programming for the software development were the kind of the father and mother of Agile. And Agile actually was a kind of an equation from the Lean thinking or the Lean startup plus the customer implication, the user and customer integration into the solution. So that, that became Agile 20 years ago in Utah with the manifesto for software development. But again, there were like two guys in there from the infrastructure world and the, the, the architecture, actually. Architecture plus every machine that you need to make the internet and the web and the e-commerce possible, right? And any software. And what, what also I've learned uh, objectively it's not an opinion and so on. Like a lot of people will describe DevOps as the teenager of Agile and Lean because the Lean process and software development used to speed the process of delivery. And of course, you know, in a, in a waterfall project, you know, a project manager at the end will come and meet security infrastructure and everyone to say, here's the new rule with this new uh, version of the software. So for your support teams, here, da, 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 da. And of course, before the project, we hope that it will survey them to see if the PCI norms and everything. So, so that was like the waterfall model. So when most of those teams were switching into Agile and Lean, the operation were like, oh, fuck, what's happening? Yeah. So I don't know, Ralph, because you mentioned something that I didn't know, you know? I don't know everything. Hopefully we don't know everything. You said it started in Belgium in 2007. So that I didn't know that. Could you expand on this? Uh, is it from the yeah. book you read right now? Because oh yeah, I'm I'm actually reading uh the Phoenix Project. It's not from the book, but I'm right re uh, re reading the Phoenix Project. It was actually advised to me by a, another CEO who is, is in biotech, and he knew that I was encountering some delivery problems, and he's like, you know, you need to read that book. <laughs> so I said, okay, let me read that book, and it's it's a, it's a horror story about anything that can go wrong in IT, basically because they don't they're not agile. Uh -huh. they're, they're not using the DevOps method. So basically you have a whole bunch of people that, not, that are not talking to each other. They're, they're uh, pushing some, uh, they're deploying stuff without telling that they're to the other team that I'm deploying stuff. And at the end of the thing, sometimes when you're deploying security patches and you haven't updated the, 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 the new software, well, what happens is that you should have done the contrary sometimes, or you should, that's the right way to do it. So before you take any action, you should talk to each other and say, okay, before we do anything, let's make sure that the security patch is good for the software that we're going to be deploying and at what order we should do it and, you know, and talk to the other departments, make sure that it doesn't affect the department. So what, that's what the, this book is talking about. And it's talking about the different ways of work uh, because they're talking about the philosophy that there's four different ways of work. And the work that's most damaging to, um, to any organ organization is unplanned work, right? 
You didn't plan to do something, but then it becomes an emergency and then you're stuck doing this, but you had something that you still had to do and then you end up not doing it. So the, the, that's the, the philosophy behind the, the Phoenix project. Wow. So it's, it's an amazing book. I, adv I advise it to anybody. But to, really it was Patrick, Patrick uh, Debois, who's a Belgium, uh, who's a Belgium guy who, who started the, the, the DevOps philosophy. And he was working with Andrew Schaefer, because I think you, you know very well. And yeah. he worked on agile, agile infrastructure. And then it became DevOps. And, you know, that's, that's how it, it started in 2007 and 2008. That's right. Mm. 2000, okay. Because for me, I, I, I don't remember because, as I said, quite frankly, a lot of people, like, when they did the manifesto for Agile, that was taking all the goodness of Lean to always speed up the process. So a lot of people think of velocity, but actually it was the quality because the Lean systems, it's about hyper quality, sometimes like at, the, at a level of unconsciousness. So, of course, all the uh, IT teams needed to actually be together and work together. So I would like to hear you when... When you approach engineer uh, that they would like to approach that culture, because could we say DevOps is also a culture? Some people will say, ah, it's a subculture of this agile lean kind of process, but actually I don't see it as a subculture. I see it as for me right now, what I'm learning, especially from guys from Brazil uh, and, uh, and, some, and some laboratory and, and speeding the, the famous like continuous uh, integration and continuous development and the flow system that we're getting back into this lean kind of Kanban things. So I see DevOps, technically speaking, not just infrastructure, but everything in technology, you know, the, the pillar of technology. I see DevOps as the future of Agile in that sense. And business agility, true business agility, that you know yours truly is uh, uh, favoring it, uh, will be uh, the two big brick, the two big pillar of the new economy and the new future. So how do you see that? Because and we'll come back maybe later because I want to hear you that the joke on it's a person. But as a culture, how do you see it could help any enterprise or there or any startup to be disruptive? Do you think DevOps is the thing uh, for a new project, a new product, should I say? Or it's more for something already there? How, how could we use DevOps? on both the human process and the technological aspect of it. I don't know if you... Do you want to go? Do you want to go, Alex? Well, I think it's important to define what is DevOps because for, for me, Agile and Scrum is a bit more concrete because I, I've been exposed to it. I've worked in wow. uh, that methodology, but what DevOps is concretely for me is, is difficult to know. Is it a way of working that has no, have been defined black on white. Is it just uh, autumn? For me, if you ask me today what DevOps is, uh, to, I would tell you it's people working in a system administration who has learned automation and has automated a lot of steps, which is CI/CD essentially. So that's that's what I would say. So if you ask me, how do I see that being useful to other people? I just don't know. Are other people doing the same thing? Well, there you go. You have it in front of you. Here's the definition. And I, uh, I don't know. This is not the definition. It is one definition that I did with some engineer. Yes. And software delivery. And inspired by the book of Mike Luke this in 2014, What is DevOps? Which is a great book to start up to, about, by the way. So the definition, uh, the proposed definition here from Mike uh, Luke, Luke this and others, was DevOps, of course, as you mentioned already, it's uh, for software development and information technology operations, is a term used to refer to a set of practices that emphasize the collaboration and communication of both software developers and IT professionals with automating, ha ha, here's yeah. the future here with AI yeah. and ASI, the process of software delivery and infrastructure change. And the Scrum guys will tell you continuous value delivery to yes. our customer and users. Yes. It mm -hmm. aims at establishing a culture and environment, a space where building, testing, and releasing software can happen rapidly, frequently, and more reliably. Yes. What do you think of this, guys? It's, it's not the definition. It's a proposed definition that was made in 2014 
with a group of engineers, uh, seeing their teams going using Kanban or Scrum, by the way. So yeah, I have a question. What? How, how would you, how would you differentiate the develop, the definition of DevOps versus just Scrum or Agile? If you remove automating, is it not just the same thing as Agile methodology? Hmm. Ah, that's a, that's a good thing. Because, you know, because again, Agile is not a thing you buy. Yeah. And Agile is not uh, either like DevOps or Lean. So actually, yes, this is why some engineer that I met uh, in many gathering of, uh, of Agilist and Scrum, it's whatever the names are. That's, they say like, for us, we added to implement this kind of DevOps to make sure that we're going to serve internally both the business and the software developers uh, and, the, and the pace you guys are coming. Because again, Lean and Agile, the main goal is not velocity. A lot of people make mistake of it, even Atlassian that is the producer of Jira. No, no. Velocity, it's a great outcome to beat your, uh, to be the first in the market, to, you know, the, the famous go-to okay. market. That, so that's an outcome. But as you mentioned, Alex, they inspire themselves as an agile culture. And actually, even the, the folks that uh, they create memes and to uh, bastardize the scrum master and make fun of the agile coach, they all agree to that they are using the four values and the 12 principles of the agile manifesto to create their working agreement, their flow of CI CD agreement and everything else. Okay. Because all the rest, okay. It's always people and process first over the technology and then the automation software that they need to produce the CI CD will also be a means, but not the end. So it's of course DevOps. It's part of what we call the agile culture, but they had created a tremendous, I think, amazing culture by themselves, especially in big organization that they have to support software, not just create new feature. Because you see, a Scrum system will be very good to become the Uber of your industry, like recruit will be in the recruitment industry. So you need something to go to market very fast and deliver meaningful value and, and an MVP kind of mindset. But then after DevOps comes into action because DevOps will actually be there as an agile mindset to help you continue to deliver new feature and new market, new language into your apps, but also maintaining your actual software. I don't know if I'm wrong. It's just my thought as a business agile coach, helping teams sometimes. This is what they're looking for. They, if they want to go DevOps, it's, it's about producing new feature, as they say here, like a process of software delivery and also that impact the infrastructure change all in togetherness. And as you mentioned before, Alex, I like this because now even the uh, sysadmin need to know a bit of programming for the cloud or the VMware and stuff like this. Yeah. So I don't know nice. if it's answer your question. It's just, again, it's only information and perception. I don't have the truth. This is the information I have right now to tell you my kind of explanation more than the answer. Um, uh, if DevOps is agile, for me, I will say yes. It's also lean because you, you'd like to cut the crap, you know, because lean, that's what it's going to do. Meaningful value means like, okay, this is not important. So we, we're going to help you prioritize things on your flow and just deliver what's needed for your MVP, for example. So it's the definition of done. I saw DevOps teams using the Scrum systems adapted to them, having a better definition of done than apparently pure Scrum team. Can you imagine that? Can you get certified DevOps today? Mm, good question. I, uh, I I see mostly that this is the Kanban University with the flow approach uh, that kind of certified it. But uh, unfortunately, we don't have my great friend Yannick here. But I think when you're a sysadmin or an engineer, uh, the certification that you do for the tooling systems that DevOps teams using will be the certification for you as a recruiter to look for. So I don't have any names right now, but uh, that could be a follow up on anyone that watch on YouTube right now or will show the replay. Please put this in the comment. Help us be part of the conversation YouTube, even if it's different. So. But that's a great question. I didn't see any kind of it's not like Agile, Scrum and Lean with yeah. the six months, stuff like this. But but I think it's more technical certification 
uh, than process certification. Mm. Because look at your client. I'm, I might ask you a question, Ralph and Alex. When a client asks you for, could you give me a DevOps? So let's go back to the recruitment field. So give me a DevOps. Find me a DevOps. So yeah, I'll have to ask you, are you looking more for an infrastructure DevOps or more developer DevOps? Or let's talk about your needs. So, so you're answering him, instead of educating your client that DevOps is not a person, you are actually confirming to him or her that she is right to look for a DevOps person. You know, you know what's happening yes. in the industry, Alex, is that, is that uh, they, if you look just in the job boards right now, it's like every company is naming the position DevOps, ah. which, is, which, is, which is wrong because it's not a, it's not a position. It's, uh, they should be saying, I need a sys admin that knows how to program, you know, uh, knows how to program this, or I need a development, whatever, Java, whatever that knows how to get into the infrastructure or that can code in my infrastructure. But they decided to, to say, okay, I need a DevOps. So uh, we end up reading the job descriptions and going deep inside it and realize what it is. And sometimes it's confusing because it's a mix of both. So you're like, okay, who are they looking for? Because this guy doesn't exist. So, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe he exists, but he's weaker on, on one side. So we end up going to the IT director to ask the real questions. So Welcome, what, Mark and Fabas. What do you really Mark. need? Like, what do you really want to accomplish? Because we need to clarify this because now the problem is that even the, the, the resources, the sysadmin guys are calling themselves DevOps mm -hmm. because it's oh. like, oh, I'm a they're looking for DevOps. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's, not, it's, not a marketing, DevOps. it's not a marketing buff again. So it's, we're, we're creating buzzword again. And so if you, if you want to eat or pay your market at the end of the day, you have to play that game. Is that what you're saying? Well, do you remember the time when everybody was an evangelizata or like an yes. evangelic? Yeah. Okay. Well, that was the buzzword. Ah, I'm an evangelic. Ta, ta, ta. Okay. Yeah. Well, what the F do you really do? Because it's not, a, it doesn't do anything like, yeah. or even uh, uh, um, what's, what's becoming popular now or maybe something. Security. Yeah. I want to do security. Okay, what do you want to do? Cool. Pen testing? Do you want to do uh, hardening or you know, network software? Yeah. So exactly. I think I think people need to go back to what they do. Like, stop coming up with like super buzzwords and oh yeah, I'm a this that that. It it doesn't matter. What do you do? What's your specialty? Okay. Can you just? There's this great debate between to do and to be. Um, uh, because no, okay, fine. I, I Hold on, hold on. Okay, I, go, I like, go. I like that, friend, Ralph, especially from a senior recruiter. So, so your client asking you for a DevOps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As we all know, that DevOps is more a culture, and it will could it could use a lot of process framework to help you deliver things with a collaboration of both the software developers and engineer, and also the engineer and the infrastructure and system. So that's, yes. that's what so far we kind of agree on this objective reality. We don't have the true ear of the there real agile podcast, but so far, that's kind uh, of things. Uh, I'll add to that. Like Sorry, I'll add to that. To welcome uh, okay, Vazi. Of Mark and Chris. Chris from Badass Agile, which is a very great podcast, by the way. I salute you. And uh, as it's my first experience on Clubhouse, be patient, guys. I'm concentrating with my quality of presence on uh, my guest, which is Ralph Francois from Nuagem, Montreal, and Alex from Real Crude. Actually, Ralph is also the founder of Real Crude. Real Crude is going to be the application for me it's my wet dream that this apps when we're going to launch it in uh, somewhere in spring 2021 it's going to be the uber of recruitment especially for it professional and it start raining like crazy here in cancun sorry about this disruption uh, it's uncut it's slight so 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 yes yeah, so again so you said like what do you do because as a recruiter or your client they're looking for someone to do things or to be a s an E or an expert in something. Could we be an expert into an agile culture or in a DevOps culture? Okay, before That's I answer this question, I just want to go back to what you were saying. You know, okay. we were, and, and I want to add the word because when, uh, when uh, it started the definition, it, it was really the unification of development. So the word unification was super important. Oh. And so the unification of development and of operations. So that's really the word that, that was the big word. And the other one was continuous. So oh, yes. you need to have continuous 
in there because those are the two main words that were super important in the first definition of the DevOps, the first philosophy. So I just wanted to, to say that. But is, to, it, is it from the, the guy you said on Bill John that yes. uh, kind of pa started that? Patrick, okay. Patrick Debois. Oh, what is his name again? Patrick Debois. It's, Patrick uh, Debois. Okay. It's D-E-B-O-I-S. He started that and he, he did it with your great friend, Andrew Schaefer. And oh, they, yeah. Yeah. It would. <laughs> I don't know if Chris knows Andrew Schaefer. And uh, at the end of this show, uh, Chris, we're going to bring you up uh, on Clubhouse. So, yes. uh, he's a great so, all right. So, me, I'm very interested about this because... But, but then again, so, so when some people, especially in Latin America that I'm dealing with right now, not just in Mexico, but this Brazilian engineer right now that's coming to be uh, the, the greatest guy using Scrum and Kanban into DevOps teams, they're creating like the future teams, I think, of disruptor developers. Okay, they're, they're, they're really eager. And even my team in Colombia, maybe Nevidin, they are, they amaze me because even the NDN right now are shaking. <laughs> Could you imagine that? Because of Brazil and combination of Colombia. And the way they explain me um, in Spanish, uh, DevOps, it's not only they emphasize on what you just said, unification. It's a, it's a, it's a culture of unification and continuous delivery of meaningful delivery. Yes. Inspired a lot by the lean <laughs> thinking. Uh, because they will challenge a lot the business. I think more than any agile coach out there. Uh, and this is what I like, by the way. It's challenging constructively, by the way, because you talk about unification. There's no consensus, but what will be the best thing for our user? And again, I would like to remind uh, a Peter Drucker quote. He was a business management consultant back in the 50s. But even though today, when we start a company or we start a product, do we have customer and user that will like to use it? So you see, in the three pillars of any organization, you have people, you have process, and you have technology. And what I like with DevOps, when they show me the mapping, the infrastructure of any DevOps, is for them, it's not people first over everything else. It's people are important because this is those who will use my apps, use my software, or even my product. And we have to maintain it with operation. And of course, a process should be evolutive and empirical to help us with new information to improve and be also in a continuous, we talk about CI, CD, but what about continuous improvement, the uh, CI2 or so, I don't know how to call it. S but SDCL, like I... <laughs> SDCL, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Simple like this. So we don't reinvent anything, but you could push a certain culture. Yes. Uh, and the oh, sorry, I said SDCL, uh, SDLC, my SDLC, God. SDLC, yes. It's Friday. Sorry about that. Oh, it's Friday and we're going to have a BLT after the show, right? Happy <laughs> <laughs> and party. Yeah, good. So, oh, my God. So that, that, that's the reflection. I think, like, at some point, um, it's people, process, and tools. And uh, when I saw, I uh, won't name the place, but uh, these DevOps evangelists just talking about any software that could automate everything, the testing, the development, the blah, blah, blah. Okay, so is it DevOps just the tooling systems? So between the person who will say, I'm a DevOps, and between, no, it's only software that will help us making more automation. Um, and what about you, Ralph? Would you like to share that the way that you built your great real crude application with a lot of AI will- and Before, before I you even go to that, I, I want to answer your question because I think that's super, <laughs> okay. that's super interesting. Which one? <laughs> well, there's there's a lot, but I mean, let's let's talk about DevOps now, and I even want to talk about the DevOps of the future. Anyways, my, the way I I think it's gonna be, or and and I had some people challenge me, and I had an interesting conversation with Alex that that made me think about what it could happen, even if if it's even possible. And you talked about you talked about humans, you talked about tools, okay? And we have a lot of uh, we have a lot of uh, companies that are working. Uh, right now on working on tools that can make the DevOps, um, the DevOps philosophy becomes a real DevOps. So, you know, I know we were laughing about people that were, yeah, they call it DevOps and it doesn't exist. Uh -huh. But I think now, soon, not within a year or two, some like people can, will be able to call themselves DevOps because they're actually building their tools 
to really automate and connect to the infrastructure so, so you can really actually do both roles. You can actually be a development operation guy and call Whoa. yourself a real DevOps. Wow. So, you know, so I think right now we're laughing and we're joking about DevOps, yeah. but I, <laughs> I think eventually it's, it's going to be not just a philosophy, but it's going to be a person. So that was my answer to, to what your question, people and, and the machine. It's coming. And people I've seen some... Are you talking that these guys will be the transhuman type of thing? Yeah, make? it's the hybrid. <laughs> <laughs> they will have a chip implanted in them and they will work like to satisfy the customer on both ends of new Their features. thoughts will become applications. <laughs> oh my God. So you guys... Okay, I'm joking, so that, I'm joking. That's that's the evil agenda behind the real cruise. <laughs> You're gonna automate wow. it like not only the mandate for consultant, but actually you're gonna create like those kind of clones now. Just <laughs> right. I'm not I'm not being serious. I, I mean, yeah. yeah, for sure. We're we're gonna stay humans, of course. You no, know, but I like your perspective, Ralph, because yeah. uh, that that will make sense that DevOps could be a person if the operation guy learned to code. But I, actually, I saw many things right now. That's the case. Yeah. Uh, the sysadmin have learned to code, especially for the clouding kind of management of the data and so on. Yeah. And now we're going to be in the digital renaissance. Uh, everything will be digitalized uh, with security and so on. So cross-functional teams and DevOps, I see it happening here. And my team in Shenzhen, China also, they're working like, they don't even name it DevOps, but for, for sure for guys exactly. like us, we're going to say it's DevOps, but they don't care about the buzzword. What they care is what I am delivering right now in my lab. To make this ASI, by the way, ASI is the new big thing. It's not AI anymore. It's it's A S A S I for they they taught me it's artificial systemic intelligence, because AI it's oh. data learning right now process and yes. it's only doing only one task, and the ASI is going to do multitask with this data. Oh, I'm learning something today. You're, yeah, that's that's something that I'm going to research. That's very and interesting. Guys in Shenzhen. They make, they're making me crazy with their new apps because it's, it's, it's taking the Bitcoin blockchain kind of, of things, putting it into our daily life. Okay. So it's, it's going to be like peer to peer, not only to exchange cryptocurrency, but it's going to be peer to peer for exchanging with, with whatever the government will be in this renaissance, because there's really a renaissance happening using that, those technology. And this is why yes. with my team in Brazil, they said, like, uh, we, we don't care about buzzword of Scrum, Kanban, Lean, this and that. We don't care about it. What we care about is transforming the world. Really, because there's no agile transformation and there's no scaling agile. There's no scaling DevOps. It's only uh, the business and the world transformation using more and more data that we have to secure. And this is why the peer-to-peer -peer and the blockchain culture, because that will, that will become up front. And creating, they are creating right now both physical and digital community. And I don't know, a lot of people talk about Bitcoin and Ethereum, which is all the, the one of the top. But right now, yesterday I had a meeting and we are at 747 cryptocurrency right now and growing. Because these teams are creating their own money exchange. Okay. And no cryptocurrency is not edge funding. If you see it as an investment, it's not. So I'm making the link with that because the, the Bitcoin revolution that happened in 20, 2008, 2009, I think this guy with the open source code and everything are using a certain type of DevOps. And all the team that develop blockchain, they use a DevOps with a, a Scrum way adapted to their reality. So this is why they say it's the future of whatever. <laughs> because right now, the meaningful value that you'd like to deliver, it's... It's the independence and the security. Well, you don't what I it's, saw. well, it's 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 funny that you're talking about that because you've probably I know you're following crypto a lot, and I saw that the banks are talking about developing their own digital digital money. Yeah. So that's something that's coming soon. So we, it's I can't wait to see to what extent it's gonna be uh is 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 gonna work, and if they're gonna be playing catch up only or it's gonna be something very serious. For sure, like if if it happens, if it doesn't happen their way, they're gonna get. They know that they would get heat, eaten, so they have to do something, right? 
a lot more people but are getting just not it. to bore just not to bore the people with the financial system that yeah uh, it's, the next 10 years that this decade is going to be amazing for everything i think for everything i don't see i don't see uh the the shit we are in with covid as something negative myself uh, we needed something to kick our ass right collectively yeah. And individually so the next decade will be a decade of choice do we have enough free will to make our own choice and and again i always teach agile with the four values and the 12 principle with a deck of cards giving the cards to the team at my table and asking them to read it and give me their understanding of the value or the principle they have in their hands and if they do it and their teams and organization and if they don't why not and how could they adapt it to their business and technological context. Okay, so we have to keep it simple like this, I think. Yes, kiss. Because when people come as an agile coach or as a lean Six Sigma, I don't know how many belt or whatever, the title or certification bullshit, they don't actually helping their client. They don't listening to their client. Because again, you don't buy agile, you don't buy lean and you don't buy DevOps. Especially if you say that in the future, a DevOps will become a person with as, as much knowledge, um, software development and operating system that's what you mentioned yeah yeah and 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 just to to jump uh, on what you were saying you don't buy that stuff no you you apply it you know exactly. i think the word apply that's that says it all it's either you you you, you could read a book and, and it's fine and but if you're not applying it then there's nothing those are the those are things that you apply if you have application and you're not using it then it's just something sitting there looking good and clean and proper but you have to apply them for them to have value. And, and let me and ask you, uh, both of you guys, Alex, you could jump anytime you want, by the way, it's always yeah. open. Uh, so when Ralph's saying like, we have to apply it and, and make it happen, uh, and this kind of environment with new information, new technology developing so fast and so on with the VG, is it the same one in English, a VG, like uh, the vigilance on what's going on, like uh, the study. So, so do we have to be very empirical in our process? Hmm. Well, you, uh, big silence now, scientific world. <laughs> empirical, that, that would mean that you would have to try something and see if it works and then yeah. adjust in consequence. Yeah, the basic uh, of empirism, yes. So, yeah, that, that, it's a question that I have related to something else. Um, when, when you're considering DevOps and you're, you're say, a small company and you or a big company and you have to um, count every dollar, uh, is there... For, for putting DevOps in place, a upfront cost of getting organized, getting informed, uh, having the tools and, all, and, and testing the tools and all of this, would it make sense that it's not for everyone? Or can it be for everyone? Because there's a way to get a solution that is adapted for everyone. But my questioning is, maybe it's gonna take some cost to find that solution. Mm -hmm. So empirical, yeah, I think it has to be for everyone because it's so new. You have to try something, and it's so new that if you're not taking risks today, you're going to be you're going to be left in the past. You're going to be in the dust. Your competitors are going to be doing what's disruptive, and you're going to be d disrupted. So you have to try new things. You have to be empirical in in a sense. But the best way is is to is to go through someone else's trial and error and just oh I'll I'll just not be in parallel I'll just try the solution as a solution. Solution as a solution, but sometimes as in not as a trial. This is what I'm doing, you know. This is what I'm doing. So it should it should be some value out of your experiment. That's what you're saying. It's a return on investment because if if, if you put money to try something, you should have something that you want to create. Is that right? Well, I think DevOps can be either a way to, you know, kind of do R and D, so do things better, as well as doing things uh, already in a more pertinent way. So you're getting a, an advantage in doing things in the DevOps way, and it's also an investment for potential. It can be like a, a an immediate return. Or it can be a not so immediate return that can get a, a very big return if you keep at it and, and it, it just pays off eventually. I, I love what That's you're saying, Alex. I, 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 to answer your question, because you talked about, is there a cost related? Yes, there is a cost related because DevOps 
uh, involves communication and there's a cost involving communication. You know, time. everybody time. Yes, time. So getting everybody together, talking about it, uh, um, talking about what everybody's doing, putting it on a map, mapping the infrastructure. What what are our decision making? Is it right? Is it wrong? How do we switch that map and then applying the new thing? There is a cost involved in that, but I like the way you finished as well. The cost of, of that mapping might be expensive depending on the small, bigger size, but the, the, the ROI, and then I'll jump back to you, Alex, Fred, <laughs> the ROI, the return is amazing. And, and I go back to just the book, The Phoenix Project, a book that it just talks about that return of investment is, is, is huge, is huge. Because once that communication and that way of work, that philosophy, the DevOps philosophy is established in your company, then you're, you're thinking ahead and you're not making a move that's going to disrupt internally your company. You're always making sure that you're helping your partners. You're always making sure that any deployment is thought about. And actually, it, it, it will affect not only IT in a positive way, but it will also affect finance, marketing, uh, anything yeah. that's related to the business. So the impact is huge because DevOps, it is IT, but it's not only IT, at, actually. It's yeah, for, but, it's for but, everything. Uh, I like that because right now for me, it's not even just about the organization itself. It's about the society. It's about the world. It's about the way that we're going to exchange, live and everything. Uh, and, and also at, at the bottom line, uh, because I know there's a guy in uh, West Virginia is starting the Agile Nomic. Agile Nomic, it's every kind of training. Um, actually, you met him at the last Crumb Bear, I think, Ralph. He was there. Yeah. And uh, by the way, the next Scrum Bear, the upcoming Scrum Bear, it's March 25th. So yes, for those of there. you on LinkedIn and YouTube, you could find the link in the description and cast your place. It's already 35 place out of 75 gone. So that was just like uh, to let you know, it's going to be very interesting because we're going to talk about next level agile that include a lot of unification of automation the human and the machine, yes. and also the blockchain philosophy applied to any data scientists uh, to our everyday lives. So, so for me, the impact is more than just a company that like to be the Uber of his industry or the Amazon of his industry. Right now, the thing is, but the basic of this is when you look at technology, IT, whether it's software or operation, if the mindset of a business owner is to say, oh, these are my tools. <laughs> these are part of the thing that I need to achieve my product better and to digitalize my product, because there's also this, this digital transformation going on, and especially, and I will be bold again, because we are on their real agile. Quebec is the third world of digital transformation. <laughs> they not even have a good bandwidth and saint Lin or saint Calix. Uh, I mean, this is amazing. We are only, what, 30 minutes drive from Montreal and these guys cannot remote work properly. It's amazing. So how could you actually develop uh, a digitalized society with uh, digital identity and so on? So, so Quebec, Canada, and most of the uh, European country will fail because I see innovation right now here in Mexico, Brazil, Colombia, and also in Morocco and Estonia, the first digital country, guys. Come on. It's a small ex-republic of the Soviet Union. And actually, I, I, I just applied to have my, uh, my citizenship of Estonia, my digital citizenship. So this is the wall coming up front. So when you say, I like it, because when you say, like, it's going to be uh, a, a developers, so you, you need to know how to code and how to script any type of product. And you also need to know how to plug it in into a, a, a database, an infrastructure, what have you. And when you talked about mapping, Ralph, it's all about like making everything visual. You see behind me? Exactly. And and I, I, I was referring to to you actually, because that's what you do. You map. You map every you know from what to do, what you were doing, and what's the result, right? So yep. you map it, and and that's that's part of 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 the DevOps process, is to put everything visually in front of you, so you can understand what's going on, and you can disrupt the the, the mapping to put it at the right way or the, 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 the right, the right, um, the right order to do things. And so everybody can always know what everybody's doing at the same time. 
and we can predict and say, okay, no, we're not doing this because that's going to affect this. That's going to affect that. Let's do this first and in the right order and, and everything. So yeah, Scrum is part of, I think I'm going to go back to that because you said it and it's true. Scrum is part of the DevOps as well as DevOps is part of the Scrum mentality. It is yep. there, vice versa, uh, part of one thing together that, that, that help each other work better in an organization or even applies to a family even you know anything society exactly. i think you exactly. said the well society yeah but but, but scrum is it's probably the, the most visual and 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 configurable system uh because of course what we see most of the time is the framework of scrum with the guide from jeff shutterland and, and ken schwaber but the first book on scrum wrote by actually a, 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 an architect and infrastructure and architecture of complex software that was called um, Scrum for Agile Software Development by Ken Schraber and Mike Beadle. And if you read that book that was worked in the late 90s, uh, these guys were advanced. We were advanced like crazy. And they were like, because that's why I was surprised to learn that DevOps by itself was actually brought into light in 2007 that's what i thought too but i didn't uh, thank you for that ralph to remind us the the history of it but but clearly for for me is always a co-creation and co-active type of things now we're just talking on a on a business agility podcast about devops about real devops because we'd like to explore devops as more than your client as a recruiter asking you for the devops person mm -hmm. Yeah. Or is it just software that a CIO or CTO could purchase to automate his software process and fuck Scrum and fuck Kanban? Because I saw it. I won't name the company, but I saw it. They think because they purchase something and they teach or certify IT guys doing things, they don't need their Scrum team anymore. So what about the designer? What about the uh, product owner that is mm -hmm. talking with a customer? You cannot yet automate it that, right? And even if you automated that, what is the human value with the machine to have only a process and tools and we forget the people? So that, that was a risk. But uh, and again, yeah, it's make everything. It's people first. Make everything visual. Be open. Be open to change. Mm -hmm. And this is why I saw my teams in Shenzhen. It's, it's, it's incredible because even the, their architecture it's movable. They have a, I don't know, they create their own software, like community create their own Bitcoin. Okay, that's that's the way it goes. Yeah. To make sure that it could respond to the way they have to change the flow of the data and the information that goes into the application they develop on the mapping side itself. Yes. So Gila will not get you there, guys. For those <laughs> who listen to me on the Daryl Agile, if you if you run into <laughs> your trail, I know you, you know who you are. Yeah, you call yourself at one of the bank on La Gauche the DevOps evangelist. I know you listen to me because you send me some emails. So stop, stop it, Fred. Stop it. Stop seeing it as... I think you you, you, you called him out there. He's, I... <laughs> yeah, well, there's many Fred. It could be me. Yeah, <laughs> anyway, no, just, uh, just a twinkle because uh, he sent me a nasty email that uh, DevOps is everything. So anyways, yeah. Um, so... All the people on Clubhouse are gone. I was going to say like the last 10 minutes, could we uh, give them the floor? And they're gone. So sorry about that. So it's a fail. I fail on Clubhouse because the Clubhouse philosophy is to bring up to the stage with their questions. Like uh, you remember the radio talk show before and someone will call you and said, yes, I'm calling from Saint Hyacinthe. And I'd like to say <laughs> that I only like the hops and the DevOps because the dev, it's not, no, software developers are crazy. Now I don't like it. So much. <laughs> well you know what the good thing about that is that you could always do another one and and since it was your first time trying clubhouse you know this is it's not a lot of people that that that, that actually went today but yeah. you know what we'll promote it the next time and we'll have a lot more people we'll get to learn oh, i'm gonna go watch a couple you know of what? other not, clubhouse not, not even not even because for me at some point this is it this is the tools for me it's people more important so the thing is my experience at, what the lessons learned if we do a mini retrospective is we add together, I think, a great quality of presence. Have we touched everything we'd like to touch on the real DevOps, according to your point of view, or you'd like 
you got something? Uh, well, I mean, we could talk about DevOps uh, for for a long time, but I mean, essentially, uh, what what do you what do you think? Did you did you have more to say, Alex? That you think? Yeah, I, I think I would like to finish by saying DevOps is a lot just um, a way of uh, speaking. You know, we have to understand each other. We have to use words. We got to use DevOps sometimes just to, 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 to quit the chatter and, and just get straight to the point. It's a uh, nomenclature sometimes. So there's this, this, are you a DevOps or do you do DevOps? It, it's, it's like the word fuck. You, you can use it anyway. Yeah. You, it's a it's a noun it's an objective it's uh it's all you want so and i think as we know this world is made of information and perspective yeah. so when people say oh i've got the truth so so of course we're bold to say real agile but i, I I'm, I'm not i'm not the real agile it's only my perspective and my experience and everything that i put into it like you guys so uh i think that it will never be finished and uh, as you said, wars are important because they have a weight uh, when you use them properly. Uh, like when uh, Mike Beadle and Berlin used to say, if you don't understand substantion from physics, if you don't understand Scrum, it was quite right. Because substantion is the dynamic of interrelation. So when you look at a Scrum team, it's all about the dynamic of interrelation of cross-functional team. So if you don't know that as a Scrum master, I'm sorry, don't hire them. It's enough. Period because they won't be able to help this interaction because they have to facilitate the interaction between people to make something great and yes. togetherness and uh yeah but for me it, it will have to be looked at because with this cyber renaissance and i think uh your uh, your explanation of what will be as a person a devops will be part of this cyber renaissance without tra plugging into a transhumanist kind of agenda <laughs> no 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 that's that's no but yeah just to conclude that the, i think the way that i i see clubhouse and i'm receiving message probably clubhouse is not while you are live on instagram or or youtube so a lot of people you know those creator of uh, there's an application in montreal actually to to stream what we do right now they could stream it to multiple platform so i don't know because the creator of these tools they want to create also a culture, you see? And it have to be a certain ways, which is, I don't like. I will tell you right up front, and even if I'm live on Clubhouse, I don't like it. Because mm -hmm. I think as content creator, and you as my guest, we should have a focused experience and a conversation. Then after, if there are 35 platforms, be my guest. I just want to spread this one content. So of course the guru, of uh, marketing on social network say like now you have to adapt it to twitter you have to adapt it to this and this well no uh, not not it's not my type because for me what is important is the content uh the uh the what we talked about more than the the form or the framework this is why i'm hashtag no framework mm. uh, well I, I i'm i'm very glad that we came here today i think uh you know if the the, the message can spread and uh, we can open a conversation about the devops and that, you know, whether you're a DevOps or you're a resource manager, an HR person or an IT director, we can open that conversation and, yep. and think about, you know, the way we, we project ourselves out there and say, oh, you know, I'm looking for a DevOps. What is a DevOps? And we can uh, kind of, even if we don't exactly agree, we can kind of share that and say, okay, you know, that, that might be the perspective of a DevOps guy when he sees the job. That might be the perspective of a human resource person, an IT director, or a recruitment agency. That's the perspective. So maybe you could work together to, 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 to have a collaboration and have something more substantial. So when we talk about DevOps, we could at least agree that we might not think of DevOps the same way. So maybe I should be more clear about what I'm looking for, you know, in my job description. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah, it, for is, my, is my part, church. Is it, is it part of a bigger <laughs> system? Huh? Because I, I love the quote from Scott Adams, the creator of Dilbert, when he tell us that winners have systems that include a lot of things, everything that we talked about, and losers have goals. Because <laughs> the goals by itself, it's part of the systems. Yes. Yeah, Scott Adams, the creator of Dilbert, who said that. There's a book called like this, Winners Have Systems, Losers have goals. Watch it on Google. You're, you're going to find it. Uh, that's a very nice book that I read. As an entrepreneur, especially as an entrepreneur or business owner, it makes things in perspective because everybody would like to sell you a goal. 
a goal of becoming this, of da 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 da. But actually, it's just one of the branch of the substantion again, because substantion is the dynamic of interrelation, not just of people, but of your system. You know, the solar systems, okay, if you put it like uh, the solar systems, solar system of the sun, the, the eight planets, some kind of sa whatever satellites and so on. So it's all moving and interrelation, right? Yes. So people who try to say, what is your goal? They're just talking about Jupiter. They're not talking about the entire systems because Working Jupiter together. might interact with an asteroid that's coming. Mm. And you miss that. So that's why these business kind of coach, like Scott Adams, they said like, nah, you're going to fail because you don't pay attention. You just pay attention to your goal, which is Jupiter. But what about the yeah. entire solar systems? What about the entire systems of the galaxy we are in? So, so that make you think, because it's like a system is a way to to get to the objective more or less. Exactly, because what we do in uh, with enterprise crown that include architecture, infrastructure, business, and everyone. It's it's really like the business agility type of system. Uh, all the goals or the objective will be put in what we call a proposed value list, which is the modern name for a backlog in Scrum. So you're going to refine it. So this is it. Any backlog item for the Scrum guys who listen to us are the goals. So could you imagine if you just have those goals, if you just have your sprint goals, that is not the vision of your product or your enterprise, right? So the vision is part of the system. The mission is part of the systems. And it's, it's like Simon Sinek, the golden circle. Why, how, and what? The why is your vision, the how is your mission, and the what is your proposed value, the objective, the goals. But if you just have goals, you might lose because it's not supported by a vision or by a mission statement that actually supporting the teams and the people that work with you to achieve those that vision and mission. So yeah. that, that's my thought. So, and, and DevOps is a person or will become a person. DevOps is a culture. DevOps is a, is a way to unify people in IT to help business deliver good quality and satisfaction to their user experience. Is that a good resume? Yes. We'll go with that for today. Yes. Well, that was nice to, uh, to meet you, Alex. Always nice to have you on the show, uh, Ralph. Thank Actually, you for having, what? Thank you Thank having me. What? Thank you. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. So upcoming show, we said, the scrum fuck up, like the fuck up <laughs> night, but we're going to talk about the scrum fuck up. All of those people who say scrum is dead, uh, put scrum into garbage. But we're going to teach them the substantial a bit and things. And also really soon, probably this spring, huh, you're going to come back, Ralph. Uh, yeah, well, this disruptor application. Real it'll, be, it'll be a good time to come back, you know, uh, to prepare the launch of Real Crude. We'll have a yes. lot of things to talk about and it'll be fun because we'll be able to share a lot of, a lot of stuff uh, from the platform with you guys, hopefully uh well we think that it's going to be super fun just disruptive and something that you're going to use all the time i think so i think yes. so so and again thank tool. you thank you everyone uh on the dairy agile so you're gonna run right now for 59 minutes maybe in two parts depending on on your type of jogging you do or treadmills so i thank you very much for listening again if you're new to the channel subscribe hit the bell to get notification and we'll see you next Friday, not for a podcast recording, but for another Friday Live Agile on the YouTube channel. As a great Scrum Master, always on time, 12 noon Eastern time, 6 p.m. for you, my European people. So we launch together in North America and we take the apéro in France or England. So that's it. Thank you very much. That's it. You stay there, guys, and roll up. Sam, roll up the jingle. Thank you. Goodbye. So close the recording.